Okay. Good morning, everyone, <clears throat> and welcome to the Rye Free Reading Room, Tales for Tots program. My name is Granny Jean, and I hope we'll all have a good time today. So caregivers, if you can give us a few minutes of your time too, to help support the program, and by all means, drown me out. <clears throat> so here we go. <clears throat> the more we get together, 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 <clears throat> the more we get together, the happier we'll be. For your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. <clears throat> well, I have a frog in my throat, and I also have one in my hand. Look at that. Well, a few months ago when it was summertime, do you remember summertime? When there were flowers out and the trees were all green. <clears throat> At least most of them, some of them were a little bit reddish. And it was warm, right? And the frogs were there, right? So here we go. Let's pretend it's summertime. Yo gung went the little bullfrog one day. Yo gung went the little bullfrog. Yo gung went the little bullfrog one day. And his eyes went yunk, yunk, yunk. <laughs> Can you do that with me? Come on. Pretend you're a little bullfrog. Yo gung went the little bullfrog one day. Yo gung went the little bullfrog. Yo gung went the little bullfrog one day. And his eyes went yunk, yunk, yunk. Well, my goodness. <clears throat> that was a, a long stretch from today, isn't it? There are no leaves on the trees. Everything is brown. Hmm. <clears throat> and we are in fall or autumn, right? We're no longer in summertime, right? But we can pretend we're in summertime because what is this? This is a mulberry bush. <clears throat> they grow into trees and the little berries on them are wonderful to eat. They're very sweet. So here's a song that is pretty old. Here we go round the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. Here we go round the mulberry bush, so bright and early in the morning. Well, what do we do in the morning when we get up? Huh? Do you wash your face? Can you wash your own face? So well, here we go. Let's pretend. And this is the way we wash our face, wash our face, wash our face. This is the way we wash our face so early in the morning. Can you brush your own hair? Huh? Here we go. This is the way we brush our hair, brush our hair, brush our hair. This is the way we brush our hair so early in the morning. Here we go round the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. Here we go round the mulberry bush so early in the morning. Can you put on your own socks? Huh? Can you dress yourself? Put some of your clothes on all by yourself? This is the way we dress ourselves, dress ourselves, dress ourselves. This is the way we dress ourselves so early in the morning. Great job. How about sitting up at the table and having breakfast, like a big, big boy and a big girl, right? Or, or you have a, a special chair that has its own little table, right? We stay there and eat our breakfast, right? We don't eat, eat it all over the house, do we? And this is the way we eat our breakfast, eat our breakfast, eat our breakfast. This is the way we eat our breakfast so early in the morning. Now, when you're all finished with your toys and all of the, your play, and it's time for something else, what do you do? Do you help pick up? Do you pick up your own toys? I hope so. This is the way we pick up our toys, pick up our toys, pick up our toys. This is the way we pick up our toys so early in the morning. Great. And it makes it more fun to come back and play in a nice clean playroom, right? Sure it does. <coughs> well, Wizzy Wizard, do you have a tip for us today? I sure do. And it's children are very interested in themselves. And learning how to write their names is a great way to introduce your child to the alphabet <laughs> uh, in a meaningful way. So uh, putting their name on the drawings uh, when, uh, uh, when very young is a great start. But always ask your child first if it's okay, because that's their artwork, okay? Mm -hmm. 
well, what do I have here? I have a very big bird. And this is, of course, a toy. But a real one, a real one is just as big as this, if not bigger. And it's a horned, great horned owl. And they live in the forest. Right? Of all the gay birds I ever did see, the owl's by far the fairest to me. For all day long, she sits high in the tree. And then when night comes, away flies she. Can you pretend you have a little owl on your hand? Hmm? So, <laughs> of all the gay birds I ever did see, the owl's by far the fairest to me. For all day long, she sits high in the tree. And then when night comes, away flies she. She's looking for her dinner. Well, I have a, a book today, Owl Babies. Look at those babies. They don't look like the mommy too much, do they? They're kind of white. Yeah, but those are her babies. And this is by Martin Waddell, Owl Babies. And that looks like the inside of a tree to me. Ah, and they live in a forest. That's where it's very, very deeply wooded. Many, 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 many trees. Once there were three baby owls, Sarah and Percy and Bill. They lived in a hole in the trunk of a tree with their owl mother. The hole had twigs and leaves and owl feathers in it. It was their house. There they are with mommy. One night they woke up and their owl mother was gone. Where's mommy? Asked Sarah. Oh my goodness, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. He's kind of the small one of the three, isn't he? The baby owls thought, all owls think a lot. I think she's gone hunting, said Sarah. Oh, to get our food, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. But their owl mother didn't come. The baby owls came out of their boats and they sat on the tree and waited. A big branch for Sarah, a small branch for Percy, and an old piece of ivy for Bill. She'll be back, said Sarah. Back soon, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. <coughs> it was dark in the woods, <coughs> and they had <coughs> Excuse me, and they had to be brave, for things moved all around them. She'll bring us mice and things that are nice, said Sarah. I suppose so, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. And there they are, way up in that big trunk of a tree. You see those three little white dots? So you see how small they are? They sat and they thought, all owls think a lot. I think we should all sit on my branch, said Sarah. And they did, all three together. And there they are. Suppose she got lost, said Sarah. Or a fox got her, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. And the baby owls closed their eyes and wished their owl mother would come. Ah, and she came. Look how big she is. Soft and silent, she swooped through the trees to Sarah, Percy, and Bill. they 
cried and they flapped and they danced and they bounced up and down on their branch. What's all the fuss? Their our mothers asked. You knew I'd come back, the baby owls thought. All owls think a lot. I knew it, said Sarah. And I knew it, said Percy. I love my mommy, said Bill. <laughs> and that is a little owl family. They'll be making their baby pretty soon. Well, <clears throat> hey, diddle diddle, cat and the fiddle, the cow jumps over the moon. There's the cat and the fiddle. The little dog laughed to see such sport, <laughs> and the dish ran away with a spoon. There we go. There we go. Okay. So are you ready? <clears throat> hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport and the dish ran away with the spoon. Well, this is out in the country. So let's take this all down and Let's pretend we're on a farm. Right. There. And what is that? That's a barn. That's a big building where all the cows go to get milked. And the pigs are there when it's very cold and the lambs. Hmm? Sure. And on that farm, there's a farmer. He has a dog. And you know what the dog's name is? Bingo. He I N <clears throat> G O. There we go. And here is Bingo. <clears throat> Once a farmer had a dog, and Bingo was his name. O B I N G O B I N G O B I N G O, and Bingo was his name. O. I'm gonna take the B away. Goodbye, B. No more B. Once a farmer had a dog and bingo was his name. Oh, I-N-G-O, 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 and bingo was his name. Oh, I'm gonna take away the I. No more I. Two claps. Once a farmer had a dog and bingo was his name. Oh, N-G-O. NGO, NGO, and bingo was his name. Oh, goodbye, N. There we go. No more N. Three, three claps. Once a farmer had a dog, and bingo was his name. Oh, Dio, 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 and bingo was his name. Oh, goodbye, G. There it goes, no more G. Four claps, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. <clears throat> Once a farmer had a dog and bingo was his name. Oh, 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 and bingo was his name. Oh, goodbye, oh, no more O, oh. no more letters. Five claps, one, two, three, Four, five. Once a farmer had a dog and bingo was his name. Oh. And bingo was his name. Oh, good job. Good job, everybody. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> in the summertime, Here, we'll just put that there. We have a next, then the next book is The Honeybee and the Robber. I wonder who the robber is. Huh? 
This is by Eric Carle. Now, this book is sort of a, a fun book because it has things that move. Looks like that bee is on the bear's nose. Do you suppose he's going to sting that bear? Well, I hope not. But if that bear is taking the honey, The Honey Bee and the Robber by Eric Carl. And look, I see an old tree with a big hole. And in that hole <laughs> is a bee's nest where they make their honey. Oh, and here's the honey bee. She has wings, she can fly, but she also has a stinger. Watch that stinger come out when she gets upset. That's right. In a hive inside an old hollow tree, there lived a honeybee. With her lived many, many other bees. One warm morning, she flew out of the hive saying, let's go gather nectar to make honey, follow me. You see her long uh, siphon there that she can sip the, the uh, nectar. Flowers open their petals to welcome the honeybee. She sips nectar from the flowers. Can you see the, the siphon go in and out of her mouth? That's how she collects the honey, other than the nectar. <gasps> Honeybee flew from flower to flower, gathering nectar. A hungry bird swooped down to catch her. Ooh, that honeybee was much too quick for it. Then the honeybee flew to a pond for a drink of water. A hungry fish and a hungry frog both tried to catch her, but the honeybee was much too quick for them. A butterfly fluttered by. Let's play, it said. The bees and the butterfly danced in the sky for a while. Then it's time to go home now, said the honeybee. With the nectar, she flew back into the honey, a busy hive. Where do you find all this nectar? Asked the bees inside. Well, watch me and I'll show you, said the honeybee, dancing and pointing. There she is, right over there, she said, right over there. Uh, watch me and I'll show you, said the honeybee, dancing and pointing to where the flowers were. All right. Then she crawled past the queen bee and stopped to watch a baby bee as it hatched from its cell. <gasps> Suddenly, she heard a terrible noise. <gasps> it must be a robber, cried the honeybees. It was a bear trying to get in and steal their honey. And here he is trying to claw his way in there. Whoops. Let's do this right. There we go. And he's, he's sticking his tongue in there, trying to lick the honey out of there. He growled as he scratched at the tree. Out flew the little honeybee and stung the bear, big bear right on the nose. Oh, she knew where to sting, all right. Ouch, yelled the bear. Ah, and ouch, 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 he howled as many bees rushed out. The bear ran away as fast as he could. All the honeybees were safe again. As in the hive, the old hollow tree, all was quiet. It was time to rest. Tomorrow would be another day. And I see an owl up there in that tree too, don't you? Mm -hmm. But the owls don't eat honey. What do owls eat? Mm -hmm. What did that little baby say? Maybe some mice? I think so. <clears throat> well, I'll tell you, that wind was sure blowing. It wasn't very cold, but now it will be. Woo! Let's see if we can make that, that wind wheel spin. Yeah. The north wind does blow, and we could get snow. And what will poor Robin do then? Poor thing, he'll sit in the barn, keep himself warm, and tuck his head under his wing. Poor thing. Yeah, that's the way some birds sleep, with their head tucked under their wing. 
So here we go. Let's blow. Let's blow with Auntie Grant, uh, Granny Jean. the north wind does blow and we could get snow and what will poor robin do then poor thing he'll sit in the barn keep himself warm and tuck his head under his wing poor thing many robins though fly south where it's warmer but today it's not it's warmer up here oh my goodness isn't that funny Well, what else is on that farm? Huh, look at that. A little hen. I have a little red hen, the prettiest you'd ever seen. She washes up my dishes and keeps my house clean. <clears throat> she goes to the miller to get me some flour and is always home within the hour. She bakes me my bread. She brews me my ale then sits by my fire and tells a fine tale. <laughs> right, don't you like stories? Those are tales, right? Like fairy tales. I have a little red hen, the prettiest you'd ever seen. She washes up my dishes and keeps my house clean. She goes to the miller to buy me some flour and always is home within the hour. She <clears throat> bakes me my bread, brews me my ale, sits by my fire and tells a fine tale. <laughs> oh my goodness, I like this farm here. I see the woods behind. It's almost like a little forest, isn't it? In the autumn comes the bear. Every autumn comes the bear by Jim Arnonsky. Look at that. We don't have bears right here in Rye. <laughs> But we have them here in New York State, yeah. Uh -huh. Probably up where my grandpa used to live. <clears throat> there is a wooded hill behind our farm. Yeah. It is a wild and rugged place with as many rocks as trees. I see a little um, porcupine there in the tree. Every autumn, <clears throat> after the leaves have fallen, a bear shows up. He walks out on the cliff where the ravens perch. Big blackbirds there. He growls into the bobcat's lair. Ah, oh, looks like the bobcat's already found a nice little den for the winter. <clears throat> the bear follows every trail to see where each trail leads. A hatch there looking at him. <coughs> He drinks cold water from the spring. And look where the raccoon is. He's found a nice little hollow log to curl up in when it's cold. And claws a tall, straight tree. Look at that. That's how they sharpen their claws and stretch. The other animals hide from the bear, but he knows they are there. There's a deer, a couple of rabbits. But the bear has had all he can possibly eat now to keep him warm through the winter. He smells the scent of a fox. He hears a grouse bursting into flight. <clears throat> it's pretty cold up there on the hill, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Almost like a mountain. When the hill is white with snow, the bear climbs the highest rock. He looks out over all the treetops. How 
it's really winter time, isn't it? Autumn is gone. Then searching amid the hilltop boulders, he finds a den and crawls inside. What are boulders? They're big, big rocks. Nestled there against cold rock with only fat and fur to keep him warm. And oh, he has a lot of that. He's all curled up. <clears throat> he sleeps all winter long. There he is, all curled up, safe and warm. And he goes to sleep and doesn't wake up until it's warm out, until it's spring. Winter is gone. <clears throat> well, in the summertime, there's a pond, and there are three frogs sitting on this log. One, two, three. Three green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log, eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are two green speckled frogs. Bug, bug. Two green speckled frogs sat on a speckled log, eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there is one spe green speckled frog. Bug. Look. Now, how does a frog eat? He has a long, sticky tongue that he sticks out and catches, catches flies. One green and speckled frog sat on a speckled log, eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. He jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are no green speckled frogs. Ooh, ooh. Now it's cold. And where are they? They've gone down under the water, way, 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 way down where the mud is. They've crawled under the mud. And go to sleep, just like the bear. Just like the bear. And then what happens? The pond what, freezes over. There's the ice. And then maybe it might, what, snow? Not going to stay here. Didn't think of that. There we go. Right? All covered up, ready for winter. Well, I think it's time for our bye bye song. Would you like to help me sing it? Okay, let's see. Bye bye to my little red hen, and bye bye to Mrs. Owl, and bye bye to the old bear. There he is that went to sleep. Mm -hmm. And bye bye to Froggy too, and bye bye to Granny Jean, bye bye to all my friends. I hope to see you next week. Bye bye, everyone. <laughs>